next. In this bonus section, we'll take a quick look at how to use the setup to rotate cubes, a different rotation approach for our disks, how to modify the setup so the disks always rotate facing up, and also how to add an initial random rotation to the disks. So one fun thing uh, I thought was worth uh, trying is to not rotate uh, spherical objects, but uh, cubes. So let's take a quick look and see what that could look like. So let's grab a box, move those out of the way, and on our box change the scale to 2. So we do have a radius of 1. Set the input on our switch to 2. Let's pick the random p scale. So let's see what that looks like. Go back, hit play. So we do want our partial rotation. And the other thing is, let's quickly disable our mountain and look at this from the side so we can see our cubes rotating around their center. So one thing we can do about this, if we run across the connected pieces and add a match size, and on the match size, we'll set X to none and Z to none and Y to minimum. And let's have a look. We do kind of have stylized rolling cubes on a ground plane and you could even use a particle sim to drive the cubes. So that's only one way to extend the setup. I am very curious to see what else you can come up with. So initially I was quite happy with the simple solution to do the partial rotation of the wheels as it works quite well. But as I thought about it some more, I thought that there might be a tiny bit more precise way of doing it. So let's quickly check it out. So let's zoom in a bit and take a look at our normal and up vectors. Let's find a good frame for this. So we do have our red surface normal in for reference here which should be perpendicular to the blue normal of our polyframe. We do see that the green up vector here that we get out of our solver is not really 100% perpendicular to the blue normal we get from the polyframe. And that might not make a huge difference now, but maybe it could if the solver runs a bit longer. So let's take a quick look at why that is and how to fix it. To compare changes, let's make a quick copy of our solver and let's jump into the one we're about to change. To keep things organized, let's um, rename our left wrangle to partial rotation and our right one to full rotation. So on our partial rotation wrangle, we set the rotation axis to the cross product of the surface normal, which we set up here, and our current velocity. And that's the way to do it if we are rotating uh, freely. But for our wheels or disks, we do have a bit more of a constraint setup where we keep the normal of our animation path and calculate the rotation of our up vector in relation to that incoming normal. So a much better way to calculate that axis is to use the cross product of our up vector and the normalized velocity. So let's jump out and take a look at our polyframe. So the blue visualizer is our normal that we're constantly rotating around and the green visualizer is the up vector that we're actually rotating to orient the wheel. And we want to be using the velocity of our objects. Let's quickly take a look. Now it's really hard to see, but the velocity is about the same as the tangent of the animation path and cross it with the up vector. So we'll get something close to the blue normal of that curve. So let's jump back inside our solver. Remember that now we are using the up vector instead of the surface normal to calculate the rotation axis. So let's jump out and see what that looks like. Let's 
get rid of our visualizers and hit play. Let's hit the real-time playback button and go again. So we do get the rotation in the wrong direction at the moment, which has to do with our up vectors pointing down. So let's quickly fix this. So let's invert our up vector here. And since we're normalizing the velocity, let's also normalize our up vector. Let's go back out and look at what we get now. All right. Let's quickly shorten the playback range. So the rotation with the up vector instead of the surface normal seems to be working as well. So let's quickly jump back in and see what happens if we were not to use the cross product of the up vector and the velocity, but the current normal from our animation path, which is very close to it, as we saw earlier. And as you can see, the rotation is partly the same, but what we're losing is the direction of the rotation. So it is important to work with the uh, velocity vector. So let's get rid of our normal. So the next important thing to keep in mind is that we are using the current velocity and the current up vector. So let's jump out for a second and scrub a bit forward in time. Let's find a nice angle. So remember that in our solver, we're updating the rotation of the up vector of the previous frame. So what we should do first is uh, rotate that up vector into our new orientation using the difference between the previous and current normal that we get from our animation path. So let's jump back in. So before we rotate our matrix, let's create another matrix that rotates our previous normal onto our current normal. And this time we won't be creating an empty matrix like above, but instead we'll use the dihedral function for this. So let's have a quick look at the help. Let's search for dihedral and take a look at the dihedral vex function. So this function will create a rotation matrix that rotates vector A unto B, exactly what we need. So let's use it and say that our matrix R is the dihedral of our previous normal and our current normal. So now before we rotate our up vector around our axis, we need to multiply the rotation matrix onto our matrix we're using down here, which will basically bring the up vector of the previous frame into the orientation of the wheel on the current frame. So let's multiply the matrix M by our rotation matrix R. So let's jump out again, go back to the beginning and let's see. Let's look at our visualizers for a moment. So now let's find a good frame for it. So now that green up vector should line up and be perpendicular to our blue normal pretty well that we extract from our animation path. So that does look a bit better than before. So if we compare with what we had before, there shouldn't be a big difference. So let's quickly check. Let's grab a merge and merge both our solvers. Let's 
move that down a bit and grab a transform and raise our previous wheels a tiny bit so we can see the difference. So if we find a nice frame, you see a tiny bit of a difference in the rotation, but not a whole lot. So in conclusion, the original setup we did probably works just as well, but now at least you know what to do with the dihedral function. So another thing you might uh, need the disks to do is to always um, stay vertical. So let's quickly uh, see what changes we need to make to make that happen. So in that case, we would need to correct the normal and up vectors that are coming from our polyframe. So at the moment, we're displacing our animation path using the surface normal that we get from our displaced surface. But in this case, we would want to displace the animation path not along our surface normal, but along our up vector. So for this to happen, we do need to change the order of our polyframe and our offset because to do the displacement, we do need the up vector and our normal from the polyframe. So let's take a quick look at our up vector that we want to be using instead of the surface normal that has a slight angle to it, right? So we don't want to use that angular vector, but our straight up vector for that. So let's change the order. Let's first do our polyframe after we project our animation path in our offset and number angle. So in here, we don't want to use the surface normal, the red one, but the green up vector. So let's rename our wrangle to offset anim spheres since we still will be using it for the spheres. And let's make a copy of it and rename it to offset anim disks. So that's the one we'll be using for our disks. Let's also color it red. And let's make some room. So move both of these up here and we'll also add a switch. So we can switch between the offset for the spheres and our disks. So on our new wrangle for the disks, we want to use the up vector to do the displacement. So let's change this here to V add up. You'll notice that the up vector is facing down instead of the surface normal we previously had. So let's change the plus to a minus. So let's quickly take a look at our blue normal now, since that is driving the main orientation of our wheel. So that should be flat as well. So let's create a vector n our normal and we'll straighten it using a double cross product. So let's write cross and we'll straighten it with our up vector. So let's write up and cross that with the cross product of our existing normal, the blue one from the polyframe and the up vector. Let's also quickly create that up vector up here. So we'll write vector up and set that to our existing up vector. But on that up vector from the polyframe, you see a slight angle as well. So this is a good moment to remove that angle and we know that we always want it pointing down. So let's write one minus one zero. So to make sure we can see it, let's quickly assign it to our up attribute again. And you see that we corrected the orientation of the up vector. 
and let's also do the same on our normal and that should take care of our blue normal so that one should be flat as well so let's see what we have so far disable the visualizers reset our solver and you see that the wheels are standing straight up let's go back and hit play and we might also want to delete our surface normal to not cause any problems in our solver so we're triggering the case where we don't have a surface normal and set it by hand to 010 all right so this is what you need to do to have always straight disks rolling on displaced surfaces so let's take a quick look at how to add a random initial orientation to our wheels so let's set our switch to input 2 and have a look at what the random orientation does to our wheels so if we use this wrangler we have a completely randomized orientation because remember we did randomize our normal and up but we only want a randomized up vector and keep the incoming normal so that's an easy fix so let's create a copy from the orient rand and rename it to set up rand because we're only randomizing the up vector so the normal we're using is coming from our incoming attribute then we're randomizing the up vector we don't need to write out our normal because we're not changing it let's switch to input 3 for our randomized up vector and now we do have a randomized initial rotation for our wheels and that seems to be working throughout our animation let's delete our slider for the seat for the normal because we don't need it because we're only randomizing our up vector so one thing you're noticing is that i'm using our initial easy solver for this that is using the surface normal and the velocity vector to figure out the rotation axis while on the refined solver we were using the cross product of the up vector and our velocity and while that was fine in the previous case where we had a constant up vector we are now randomizing our up vector so let's take a look up here check out the visualizers and disable the curve so now that we have changing up vectors on our points the up attribute is really not working for us to figure out our rotation axis so this could be a point where we introduce a orient attribute where we separate our initial rotation from the calculation that we're doing inside the solver where we're using the up attribute to calculate the transport along our animation path or we could just be using our initial solver since that is working equally as well and there we don't rely on our up vector so we can use it to randomize our initial orientation so these have just been a few examples of how you can modify the setup depending on what you want to do you might find many more ways you need to modify or extend it i hope you have fun playing with it uh, see you soon